Shri Darshakun Lee, Salaamu Alaikum and good evening and welcome to our regular show. Prati Mungal Bara Amandari program to hai thake Politics and Beyond. Jara Amandari Shathe Shabu Pathwari Moto Ebar Amandari Shathe Jog Diya Chan Tadir Juno Bool Chhe Jara Amandari program to hoche Politics Niya. Abong Politics ki bhaabe aapna jibone bivinno policy diye shubhida o shubhida korte paare abong aapni ki bhaabe Politics ke shundho korte paare an shegoli niya amre ehi onushthane ala pala chana kore thakki. आज के आमदनी साथे जिन्हें आचन तिनी बांग्ला बोलते पारेन्ना तिनी एक जोन एक टा काउंसलर लीडर एवं शेष जोन आम्र आज के प्रोग्राम टा मोटा मोटी इंग्लिश ही करूँगा आमी ज्योति ज्योति जेटा आम्र कोरे थके आमदनी प्रोग्राम में आज के आम्र ऐ आमदनी गौतम शाप्ता एक विस्ता आम्र अनाउंस करूँगा तार आगे आम्र आमदनी गेस्ट जे जिन्हें आश्चर्य तार ताशा तापने रिपोर्ट चेक कर दो। टुडे विद अस वी हैव द लीडर ऑफ पार्किंग एंड डायग्नम काउंसल काउंसलर डेरेन रॉडल। डेरेन, थैंक्स फॉर कमिंग टू आर शो। थैंक यू वेरी मच। आई नो यू वेरी टाइट स्केड्यूल, सो थैंक्स फॉर मेकिंग इट टू � and um, I believe this is the first time uh, in our t TV channel. It is, it yes, is, yes. yes. I'm really pleased to be here. It's, it's really good. Was it an okay journey for you to come along? Yes, uh, it's a couple of trains um, that I got here. I managed to find it. The, uh, the in-laws don't live too far away from here, so All I right. had a good idea where it was. Okay, so Tahamlis is, uh, is, is where you got married, pretty much, is it? Well, it's uh, where my wife was born and grew up, oh, and, right, okay. uh, and my in-laws still live here. So, okay, so uh, you've got some grassroots. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks again for joining us. Shri Dashwani will do the uh, last week's quiz now. And um, the last week's quiz was how many councils are using the mayor and cabinets model of the governance with the directly elected executive mayor in England and Wales? The proper answer is number 15. And uh, I'll ask Darren to bring out a winner. Just announce it. Just announce it. OK. Uh, is it? Uh, Jaglu, Jaglu, yeah, of Whitechapel. Whitechapel. Yep. So well done. Jaglu of Whitechapel. Jaglu, by the way, you have to ask us about the first time. Our other chapter, the quiz, we have to ask you about the screen. Viewers, today our uh, um, quiz would be uh, related to uh, Barking and Dagenham, in a way, and it's also related to UK in a, in a major major player, as a major player. And the quiz for today is which year did Ford plant open its doors in UK? The possible three answers are 1920, 1931, and 1945. You'll see it's coming up on the screen, and you will have to email your, ad uh, your answer to the email address at pnb at channelireurope.tv. Um, as you know, uh, the regular viewers, as you know that uh, in the first segment, we always ask our viewers, um, our guests, that, uh, what, what their political opinion is. And today we, we are fortunate to have a leader of a council, and I'm sure he will have a lot to say. Um, Darren, what will be your highlight, political highlight in the last week or two, or something that has captured your mind and imagination in the political arena that you'd like to share with us and the, and the viewers? Well, it depends what you get into politics for. And uh, I got into politics for the community, and that's the Holder community. So if I say from when I started as leader, which was May this year, probably the highlight for me has been the, the youth parade, the Borough Youth Parade that we had in Barking and Dagenham, uh, where 1,200 young people came together uh, of all different backgrounds, of all different faiths, of all different um, religions to celebrate being young people in Barking and Dagenham. So I thought that was a, a great highlight for the summer. OK, so what, what exactly, I mean, what, why is it a political highlight for you? Because a bunch of kids just running around and you've just arranged it. So, you know, maybe with balloons. But what is the main ethos behind it? Well, it's about what we fought for as a community. Um, as I said before, it depends what you get into politics for. I didn't get into it for riches, for fame, for, for trying to uh, you know, make myself a big star anywhere. I got into it because actually I felt my community needed leadership uh, to, to, to bring the community together. Community cohesion is massively important to me. Um, and at the same time, 
uh, I'm really proud of our young people. I'm, I'm, I get quite cross when I hear people attacking them for being these, these young people that have no aspiration or no ambition. Well, actually, I think quite the opposite. And uh, this year alone, if I give you an idea, we didn't lead this. As a council, we helped facilitate it. Right, so okay. the mayor, um, we, me and the mayor went to an event and we said, wouldn't it be good if our young people did something like this? So we, we, just, we just sent out some invitations to some local groups and said, would you be interested in, in saying that you're proud to be young people in Barking and Dagenham? And over a six week period, about 40, 45 groups come back, mm. and out of that, there was about 1,200 young, young people, and that's, you know, eight, from babies through to 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds. And, and next year, they're already working up that celebration where we expect it to be three to 4,000 young people. Okay, so, so, you know, they're working on it. What we want to do is try and so help So it's a snowball year on year. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And so you started off with 1,200 this year, so you're expecting 4,000 next year. Yeah. And um, the following year, according to that, you'll have about 8,000? Why not? What, so what is the total uh, youth population then? Well, our, our borough is unique in London, actually in the UK. We have the highest uh, under-19 demographic in the country. Okay. Uh, it's around um, 60, 62,000 young people. Wow. So you, you're, you can reach up to 62,000 <laughs> potentially if you, if you want to. Uh, I mean, it, the idea is what we want them to do is celebrate that they're there sure. and that they're an, an important part of our community. Um, so we have some real pressures there, but those sure. pressures could be opportunities. Sure. And we have to make sure as a community of all different faiths, mm. of all different backgrounds, that we're able to show a positive that our young people can bring to the borough. Okay. Well, you know, um, is it, was, it just, was it just a parade, all day long parade, or did you have like a fair f kind of going on? A bit of kebab here, a bit of <laughs> chips there, and, and was it? Was it? Yeah, no. What we did, what 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 happened was, they started in one park, right, in our Barking Park, okay. which is a green flag park, which is nice these days. They got a green flag status. Um, they marched through in a nice orderly manner, um, and we had majorettes, we had uh, BMX bikers, we okay. had boxing clubs, we had uh, our Sikh. Uh, community youth group that, uh, that okay. was doing uh, doing their uh, traditional sports. Um, we had the scouts, we had the uh, police cadets. They were flying flags. They had their own banners. They were they were celebrating the fact that they were young people. And and they walked through the town centre of Barking, and then we got the Abbey Green, which is uh, where the first UK government was actually held. Okay. Um, so you know it's about them being pri having pride in the area. Um, and at the end, all of them had set up pitches. There was bouncy castles. Okay. There was a stage. There was a bit of entertainment, and it was them that commanded what they wanted to see there. And that's the same for next year, because next year we have, as with many boroughs, we have a very uh, big celebration next year of 50 years okay. as Barking and Dagnum okay. as one. Um, and that's going to be part of the whole whole year celebration. So we've got some really so good... So 50 events. years of Barking and Dagenham being together? Being together, okay. yeah. And in, in terms of cost, who, who paid for the, for the event of this youth parade? Did, was it a joint venture with to people be honest, or was it the council? No, 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 no. What, okay. what happened was the council facilitated some of it. Okay. Uh, business invested into it. Okay. And so sponsors came in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the community led it. And, okay. and that's very much what we're doing for next year. Okay. Uh, so we are going to have uh, nine big events across the borough, um, which, which will be facilitated for by the council. It will be led by the community, and that's all different parts of our community, mm. but it will be invested in by business, because actually that's the model we now need to work in. Okay. Councils no longer can be uh, facilitating everything. Yeah, um, they can just give the space and the that's venues. It. And, and, yeah. and give the, the professionalism that needs to happen for health and yeah. safety and the rest yeah. of the issues that come around that. So we facilitate it, the community populate it, and business play their part in it. Okay, well, it's interesting because within these tight schedules and, and the, and the um, financial side of it uh, throughout the UK, and, and you managed to pull this out, which was which is really good for the young. And um, there was no problems with, like, ethnic people coming in. I mean, you know, knowing Barking Dagenham, that 
if you're if you're out with your hijab, you might have the BNPs coming, trying to take over. You didn't have any kind of those incidents. Not at all. As a matter of fact, they integrated, is it? Or? Absolutely. I mean, from the ashes of the BNP, and I know you're going to ask me some questions later on that, but from the ashes of that, we now have a really good community feel within the wider community of Barking and Dagenham. Uh, obviously, there's still tensions, as there always will be, but there's now 130 different ethnic groupings in the borough. Okay. Uh, which is wonderful. Sure. It's, it's so great to see people coming together with all different aspirations and inspirations, you know, uh, but we all like culture, we all like the arts, we all like poetry, most of us like TV. Yeah. So, so we have a lot of commonality as well. Okay. So it's about showing that for all our difference, we have a lot of stuff that makes us one. Sure. And, and that's what we go with as a borough now. We're one borough, we're one community, yeah. and we are London's growth opportunity. I know this is just one event that you've done. Mm. Um, when was it done? Which, which month? It was uh, end of September. End of September. Mm. Just, uh, you know, chipping out of summer kind of thing. Mm. Um, and you're planning to do it again. But besides uh, this youth parade, what else are you providing throughout the whole year for the, for the youth? That, I know this is one, you're championing yeah. this and you're yeah. very passionate about yeah. it, but the one day of youth parade is not enough for youth, is it? So. Absolutely. One of the things I'm doing as leader, uh, I think is really important, I'm inviting every school council, of which there are 52 schools in the borough, okay. so from, from the junior schools up to the senior schools, every school council has been invited to interrogate, if you like, the leader, to, oh, okay. to come and talk to okay, me. That's nice. And, and ask their questions. And I also, every quarter, have to stand in front of the youth council because okay. there is a youth council in the borough. Uh, well, I'm very happy that you said that because there are certain boroughs within the UK where the leaders and the mayors wouldn't even answer the members' questions, but you're going ahead and trying to answer questions from kids. Uh, you know, hats to you that you are trying to do that. And um, it could be a tough ride because kids can ask all sorts of questions. And they do. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly do. Um, but uh, that, besides th this, you know, championing the parade and and um, and the questioning that you you you're opening up to, in terms of physical centres, youth centres mm. and things like that, how about are you going about in your council on a day to day basis? It's very difficult. Um, we, we have the challenges that all councils face at the moment. I mean, ho the austerity measures are, well, no council's ever had to go through what we're going through in local government now. Sure. So, you know, we've already cut £90 million worth, uh, of, of funding. council funding. We've got another £54 million to go in the next three years. That means all services, it doesn't matter if it's young, old, whatever those services are, they're going to take a bit of a knock. Sure. So what we need to do is empower our community to make sure that they can fill that void. And, and I passionately believe community can. So what we're doing at the moment is we're talking to our CVS, Community Voluntary Sector Partners. We're asking them to play their part we're asking the community to play their part and we're asking business to play their part because actually the whole scheme of what we're trying to do for 2015 isn't just about celebrating 50 years of our past, mm. it's about looking at how we're going to operate for the next 25 years of our future sure, sure. and how, how we have to have a different relationship. It's very much more about partnership working mm. than how it has been in the past where everyone could rely on the council to give every service. No council can feasibly do that anymore. So what, what is your current budget in, in your youth service? Um, well, it depends what part of it, you know. There's, there's, total it's, it's, a, it's around about 600,000. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we are, we, there was a proposal uh, to put forward to cut it, to, to, to finish okay. it. We haven't done that. What we've said in uh, uh, looking forward is we will have to reduce the funding to it. Okay. But we will do it in a way where we'll allow other funders to come in. So, sure. for instance, in Tower Hamlets, I understand they get around around £30 million pounds worth of external funding. Sure. So that could be the big lottery, children yeah. need, so on and so yeah. forth. In Barking and Dagenham, we only get around £3 Places million. like Tower Hamlets also has the fortunate of um, getting some 
uh, additional money from places like uh, Canary Wharf yes. and um, you know uh, the Royal London Hospital, um, things like that. But uh, in Barking Dagenham, it's the small businesses and the and the big mm. food plants and things like that that need to, that would contribute. I would assume. Yeah, I mean we we are in a we're in a transition at the moment as a borough. Uh, we had big business. In fact, at one time, Barking and Dagenham as a borough was one of the richest boroughs in London okay. um, because everyone worked. Everyone worked either in Folds or a secondary yeah. to Folds or had other, other jobs. Um, so we had very little unemployment. Um, since Folds has uh, left, um, it left a vacuum. Sure. So, you know, for a From decade... 38,000 to 3,500, as you, yeah, as you were yeah, mentioning yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, 58,000 down to 3,500 is yeah. a massive change. Sure. And, and it's all that secondary work as well. So you had suppliers to Folds and sure. so on and so forth. So it's, it's when, that, when they left back in 2002 to 2004, when they really sort of closed the plant and everything else, it left not only a, a vacuum um, in the political sense, it left a, a vacuum in the whole community sense as well. Sure. Um, because everyone knew that everyone worked in Fords or had some link to Fords. When that disappeared, like the mines in the north of England, mm. the whole, everyone's livelihood changed or, you know, they couldn't find work. The skills that they had weren't weren't adaptable to, to where they were trying to get to. So it caused a real, a real shift in the community. Um, so from the ashes of that, yeah. uh, we're a decade on, and actually we're now looking at growth, we're looking at opportunity, we're looking at investment, and we're looking at ambition and drive, which is really good. Okay. Um, with, the, with your new developments that you're coming up, you probably have built in the youth service, mm -hmm. and you know, your, your parade probably can expand into those, those areas. Mm. And what is the vision within these new developments of having youth facilities and youth provisions? Absolutely. The youth is paramount in taking the borough forward. Um, so we've got a great college. We've got Barking and Dagenham College. We have Prince Andrew, uh, yeah. uh, the Queen's son, who came and visited the, uh, the I Create, which was actually designed by the young people themselves. And he actually said that it was the best uh, uh, sort of IT facility that he had seen in a college anywhere in, 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 in the country, which was wonderful. It's great for our young people to hear that they are getting the best facilities for where they are planning to move themselves. Um, and at the same time as that, we've also got some really great investment from new companies coming into the borough as well that looks at Tech City, which I know is, is based here in, yeah. in Tower Hamlets. But the fact is, we are only 15 minutes away. Yeah. Um, so actually, it's nothing in, in the real scheme of things. Sure. Yeah. So we are, we are really well placed to get some of the London business but to also have some own grown business as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're really going for in Barking and Dagenham. If you had, the, if, if, if you had been uh, considered as a inner London borough and you probably would have been able to spend a bit more on the, on the youth service from the premiums, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, there is something where, where the, 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 it is a bit unfair on, on what inner London boroughs get to out of London boroughs. Uh, we lose eight million a year under the settlement. Uh, Westminster, on the other hand, gain 30 million a year. Mm. Uh, they can't fill all their school places. We're having to build two schools a year. Yeah. You know, so it is a bit un unfair and unjust. Um, but you can't just bleat on about that. What you need to be is proactive on how you're going to change your circumstances. Sure. As I always say to m my children, you can either make it a good day or a bad day. And in Barking and Dagenham, we want to make it a good day. Sure. Well, on that good note, uh, we're going to go on a break and um, shortly come back and, and discuss further with you. Chudasha Mundli, we're going to go on a, a short break. And uh, after the break, stay with us. After the break, we're going to talk with the uh, leader of the uh, Council of Barking and Dagenham. <laughs>
Shri Darshak Murli, welcome back to our show um, after the break. Before I go into our next segment, let me just remind you of our quiz for today. The quiz for today is which year did Ford plant open its doors in UK? Uh, 1920, 1945. You will uh, send your answers to our email address. It's coming on the scroll. Um, the email address is pnb at channeleyeurope.tv. On this segment, we'll be talking about the political highs and lows in Barking and Dagenham. Most of you know that uh, Barking and Dagenham had 12 BNP councillors in 2006, and they diminished in 2010. And um, we just want to know how that was uh, done, and who best to discuss that with us than the leader of, of the council himself. Um, Darren. You've been a councillor for for a while. Well, yeah, since two ten. Two ten, and uh, you know you're you're the leader now, so you obviously have to uh, campaign uh, side by side or or against the uh, far right. And they, as I said, they had 12, 12 council councillors and and a and a um, GLA member. So what? did you have to do to make sure that they don't come along? Or what is the magic that you brought on to the residents to make them understand? Oh, that was it. Where do I start? Um, I, I don't mind admitting that in 2006, when I looked at the local election results, um, I, I was one of those sad people that stay up through the night to see what's happening. Um, and, uh, and I cried. I cried for mm -hmm. my community. For the first time, you know, um, in uh, 2006, you know, 36-year-old man crying um, because his his community, my community, the community that I was born and brought up in, felt that much pain that the far right was the answer to their problems as they fall. Mm. Um, so the journey started there. I made a conscious effort of changing my lifestyle. I I had a business. I was. I was doing very well in, in different areas. Um, I changed where I was going. I, I was also working for charity as well. Um, and I concentrated on rebuilding the structures within my community. Uh, Fords had, had sort of collapsed the community. Uh, the political class within the borough wasn't talking about the real issues that concerned the community. And the Labour Party, to be frank, was quite dormant. Um, as a party, uh, it was uh, completely and utterly at odds with the community it served. Um, the age group of the of the Labour Party was, you know, unproportionately uh, of a higher age group, and it was only dominated by one community, and it was the white community. Right. So what what we had to do. Uh, with the help of uh, the MP, Margaret Hodge, she'd already been warning about these issues and, um, and, and the party actually attacked her for them. So when we talk about immigration today, when yeah. we talk about housing today, you know, and what we were talking, the cost of living crisis, well, actually, these are the things Margaret was talking about back in 2005, 6, sure. 7, you know, but 8, those were, 9, those, were, those were not really the issues that actually brought the BNP into light. Yes, they probably were talking about the immigration, that mm. you know people are taking their houses and jobs. But the fact that the, uh, the Ford plant collapsed from 58,000 jobs to 3,500, so literally you lost about 55,000 jobs, that might be a detrimental effect for, for them to come along. Well, it, it was, but you've got to remember that people were educated to work in Fords. Sure. So, for, so people were were brought up not to really get a good education, but to be, I always say, cannon fodder. Sure. So you, you worked on the assembly line, or you worked within Fords, and you did that same job day in, day out, yeah. and effectively you got told when to go to the toilet, you got told when to take your holidays, how to live your life. Yeah. So it's very much a, a parent and child, you know. So when that all went, if you like, you had a group of children with no direction. Yeah. Um, so, so we had to rebuild the party, uh, in, in the Barking, what, what is the 11 of the 17 wards? So yeah. um, the Barking constituency uh, actually goes into where I live in Dagenham, sure. and I live in the heart of Dagenham. Um, uh, and then from there, we had to then re engage with the whole community. So, you know, it was a really, really quite a terrifying fight. 
Um, it, when I'm looking back on it, my, my family were threatened. Mm. I, I had death threats and, and my oh, house right. got attacked. I was going to talk about, uh, you know, the, the threats um, in politics, mm. especially in Barking and Dagenham, having uh, BNP around and now the, the new UKIPs. Um, I mean, what kind of threats did you, did you receive? I mean, you said death threats. Mm. Uh, for real? For real, uh, yeah. At your doorstep? Um, yeah, letters, uh, email, uh, Facebook, um, all those sort of mediums, if right. you like. The police took them very seriously. Was it coming from one quartet? Uh, to be honest, don't know. Okay. Uh, it's very hard to prove. Right. You know, it was people supporting these bigoted views. Right. Um, they, they, you know, we still have issues today. Um, not that long ago, my wife found a, a rock on her car, you know. So, you know, it's sad to think that people with that much hatred and bigotry feel that's the right way of going. So, and so I'm happy politics, for them. politics has given you somewhat a bitter taste at, at some point. Well, <laughs> I live, I, I've come from Dagenham, so it really ain't an issue. I mean, in the respect that... You know, you have to live, when you, when you grow up in a very working class area, yeah. you know, a very poor working class area, you have to grow up pretty tough. Right. So in that respect, does it bother me? No. Um, what it does, though, is it, it makes me want to fight harder mm. for the people that are less, less able to fight. Sure. So that could be people from the BME community. I mean, the new Bengali community that we've got moving into the borough. Uh, it's really important that they understand that they have a voice within the Labour Party that represents them. And, and I'm really pleased that as the campaign organiser, as I have been since, yeah. since 2007, um, we've got now five Bengali councillors. But okay. they're not Bengali councillors, they are Labour Party members. Which, which happens to be Bengali. That's it, right. you know, because I happen to be a white Christian uh, of faith person yeah. that happens to be, you know, that person outside of being in the Labour Party. Sure. Together, we're all the Labour Party. Okay. And that's what's really important. But in terms of threats, you, you talked about your personal life and, yeah. and a little bit about the BNP, um, how they can be a bit of a threat. Um, are they still a threat? And what, uh, Dan, we've got a phone call. Let's take the call okay. and then we'll come back to you. Slavon, come caller. Hello. Hello. We lost the caller. Uh, please do try. We are having somewhat a little bit of difficulties with our lines, but please do continue to uh, try to call us. Um, as I was saying, I mean, do, are they still? Do you think that there's a chance of them coming back? And then, with the new, do you feel that with the new parties like UKIP, is there any threat within your area? I, I think we've got a problem, and this is not just in my area. I think this is generally in, in, in the British politics scene. Any extreme, whether it be left or right, any, any party that is for just one group of people is wrong. Um, and, uh, and it's up to all mainstream parties. The reason why we're mainstream parties is because we're inclusive. Mm. And it's important that all parties understand what being inclusive means now and you know that's a lesson for our, my own party uh, I think there has been issues where um, we lost what we really meant about the labor movement from the working class community um, under under the Blair years and yeah. into the brown years and we paid for that you know but the truth of the matter is our principles in the Labour Party is about fairness for all and, and that's really important when you're talking to people on the doorstep, when you're talking to people about how they, how they live their life in the respect of whether they can put the heat in on this winter or whether they can eat this winter, uh, it's important that together we find a solution. Uh, and, you know, one of the things I did in the borough, um, forget being a councillor, it's about being a human being, yeah. is I started up a food bank. Um, and it wasn't under any religious context it was purely under the fact that if a f if if somebody in my community was hungry needed support as a fellow human being as a fe fellow you know resident i'm there to support them and that's really really important and that sort of politics needs to come back into the mainstream sure um in terms of um in terms of the uh, um, i mean uh, the other threats uh tories are somewhat making waves in your area, uh, I hear. Um, they've secured 
the um, the community center. You might want to enlighten <laughs> us, the Fanshawe. <laughs> the Fanshawe. The Fanshawe. They didn't. Okay. Uh, I mean, again, with the greatest respect to people making false claims, here's a false claim. There is a limit of the truth okay. in the claim, and I'll acknowledge the limit of the truth. They put it in for something with a special uh, status on asset, yeah, uh, which really doesn't mean that much, other than it's a community asset. Well, actually, you don't have to tell me that, because I was the person, as the leader, one of the first things I did was acknowledge the fact that we weren't going to close that centre down. 1,100 people a week use the centre. Now, that's not just of the Muslim faith, which there is a, uh, Mr. Ali in the mosque and the guys there are really lovely people, but it's also the rest, Peter, who runs the, the rest of the centre. Okay. Um, so there's a mosque operating inside the Central Centre and then there's and, another... And there's a community... So it's a multi-purpose use... Absolutely. Okay. And that's really, really important. Now, we could have got money for it, uh, and I have to say the previous leadership was looking at that path. Sure. Because it backs on to where I am as a councillor in Alabon Ward, and it's actually technically in Parslow's ward, there are two centre wards of the, bor uh, sure. of the borough, and if we'd have taken that hall out, yeah. that means two wards wouldn't have had a community area. Okay. So, so it was quite important for absolutely. centrally for, for those areas to have that. Absolutely. And as somebody who lives there, I was passionate about keeping it. And I made it very clear um, that if I became leader, uh, we would keep it. So you and, kept your promise. And I kept my promise. Okay. And let's talk about a little about the governance side of your council. Yep. I mean, you have 51 councillors and all of them are Labour. They are. So how do you keep your governance clear and crystal? Because even in, you know, in, when, when I have all my Labour councillors or all my Tory councillors and I'm the leader, I should be in a bit of a cushy cushy situation that I can do anything I want. Um, seeing other boroughs uh, uh, around UK, having an opposition is the best way forward so that they keep you on the ball. How are you keeping yourself on the ball? Actually, I think it's harder to be all one, to be frank. And the reason why I say that is because you're open to that, to that assertion yeah. that actually you're not just and genuine and so on and yeah. so forth. I can tell you that it's actually a, it is a lot harder. Within the Labour Party, um, there is a wide spectrum of people, you know, so there are left to right within the party, yeah. but they are, you know, even our right is more left than the yeah. conservatives, yeah, if you like, views, you know, yeah. but the truth is there is a big spectrum of people with, with different backgrounds, with different uh, emphasis on why they got into the politics in the first place, but we'll all principally have socialist values. So that in itself is, is difficult. Yeah. But then at the same time, we need to make sure that we are as open and transparent as we possibly can mm. be. And it's really, really important that that is the case. As the leader this year, for the first time ever, not only do we have the select committees where, where the public could go along and look at the councillors, if you like, attacking the portfolio holders, because sure. we, we run on a, a strong leadership model, um, I also did consultation sessions. So I went out and I did six of them around the borough on top of the selection process, sure. yeah? And I put myself in front of different groups for them to come forward, not only to uh, look at what we were proposing, mm. but to come up with ideas on how we can take it forward. And it's one of the reasons why the, when I went to the youth parliament mm. that we had, our, our youth guys, it was a really good discussion because they've really switched on young people in knowing what they want and how they want it delivered. So it was a really good piece of work. You, you mentioned in our first segment that you're you, you're opening it up mm. for you know for you to be scrutinised mm. as uh, you know as far as with the with the school children. Yeah. Um, within the council uh, procedure, um, the overview scrutiny, which is a very important body within within the governance. Um, and have you been, since you've been a council, uh, the leader, I mean, it's not been mm. too long, but have you been scrutinised already? Oh, absolutely. How many times have you been scrutinised? Uh, we, we get scrutinised so, every... To date? Well, continuous. 
Um, have you been called to the to the committee? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, we've just gone through the budget for the next two years. Okay. I had to do some uh, safer and stronger was because I have a portfolio as well. My sure. portfolio being community. Okay. Um, so so most of my stuff came in in that area. So that's the one I went to. Okay. But the truth is, every councillor has the right to call in any decision that I make with my with my cabinet. You know that is the, that is their right. That, um, You've got to understand, we don't run a mayoral model. The mayoral model is less accountable because um, all the power is with the mayor. Sure. With the system we have, I'm still an accountable not only to the electorate, but to I'm accountable to the, and to the councillors. Council, yeah. so, so it's actually a stronger model than the mayoral model. You have just appointed a new, um, new chief exec yeah. uh, who has experience from Tower Hamlets. He does. And he has a vast knowledge from Brent. Yes. And uh, they are pretty much, if I safely I could say, that those two boroughs are a bit better in, in affluent than Barky and Dagenham. It is. So are you expecting him to bring in some of that taste into Barky and Dagenham? I'm not expecting him to do it. I'm expecting us to do it. OK, under um, your direction. Absolutely, okay. because actually it's under the community's direction. The community has given us a very clear mandate about where it wants us to go give our young people opportunity, give our wider community opportunity, give us some aspiration, because actually we've, we've had a taste of it over the years. We would like it back, please. Um, and we have the opportunity for that to happen. Mm. Barking and Dagnum as a place is where London has to go. Mm. London can't go northwest or south. No, they have to, yeah. It has Expand, to come yeah. east. Now, Tower Hamlets has had the Docklands yeah. and the great, the great legacy that gives now to the community in developing itself and the money it gets from, yeah. uh, from the business rates and so on and so forth. Newham's had the Olympics and what that has done as a legacy is, is really, yeah. really, really good. Well, we've got to decide and we are, we are, we've got a cl very clear steer on where we're going here about Barking and Dagnum. And we're in that transition now. So, you know, we're like a, a blank canvas where we've got so many opportunities. We've got to make sure we get the best ones for the whole community. Because whether you're, you're from the Bangladesh community, whether you're from the, 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 the I can't say the word properly, English community yeah. within, the, within the borough, right? Or whether you're Hindu, whether you're Sikh, whether you're Muslim, whatever you are, you want the best for your family. And you know what? As a, as a leader of the council, I lead my community, but I also serve it. And I am its greatest servant. Mm -hmm. So I've got to make sure that I lead it on the right path and I serve it by bringing in the right opportunities. And already in six months of this administration, I can, I'm really pleased to say that we've got four hundred million pounds worth of investment coming to the borough, Very and good. that's and that's. And that's I was going to say it's because that's. you just said that the borough is pretty much a canvas. It is, and you've got Crossrail running through your borough, so there are opportunities of having some of the poorest areas of the borough to make it really affluent, mm. one of the best in the country, if you if you want to. Mm. Um, so you've got that uh, opportunity there. Coming back to uh, a different kind of governance yeah. uh, within your Labour Party, yep. because you're a leader, that's why I'm going to ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, we saw um, this week Gordon Brown has um, rest his hat on politics and he's he moving on. Tony Blair has moved on a bit earlier. Yeah. Um, your current leader has sacked your Attorney General Emily Thornbury yeah. on uh, the basis that she tweeted. I mean, that could be, tweets is a tweet, you know, it could yeah. be anything. But because she's a politician and uh, your leader took it quite seriously and then um, decided to, to sack her. But why is he not doing the same when it comes to Ken Livingston? Because your policy <laughs> in, your, in, the, in the Labour Party policy, as far as I know, is that anybody that supports anyone that is against your party or goes to their rally or supports them will be sacked. So uh, why is that not happening? Uh, to be honest, I wish I was at that level of power. I'm, I'm not, 
Um, I can't surmise on it. I mean, it's a question you'll have to ask uh, Ed himself to come in and talk to you. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to, to him. Absolutely. But I thought that because you go to the leaders' meetings, yeah, I mean, I think there's a bit of a discussion around there. To, to be honest, we're, we're, we've got the serious stuff to talk about. You know, okay. we've, we've got East London as a whole, and um, we've got over £400 million pounds worth of cuts coming to East London. That's a serious agenda to manage and we need to make sure that we have serious answers to that agenda especially when you see that you know in in the rest of london they're so not so do they're you not think that this is a serious things. question about no uh, favoritism i i do i do but the point is i'm not at a level okay. to be able to discuss that in the respect that i don't know the answer sure. i'm an honest politician okay. and an honest po politician turns around and says it's not where i'm at yeah, they probably do have these discussions. Mm -hmm. I'm not privy to them, um, and I would, I would say, as I said before, you'd need to ask Ed to come on and okay. answer that one. If I think it's the right thing to do, then no, I don't. If you stand by your beliefs, then you stand for the party you stand for. It's like, you know, I, I've met Ken. I think he's a very nice chap. I think he's done some great stuff for our party. I sometimes do wonder why um, he feels it's necessary to... I don't know, push, push, push it a little bit. Mm. But you know, that's what great politicians do sometimes. They push the boundaries. There's been some very good politicians in the past that have pushed boundaries, and I dare say there will be in the future. Okay. Uh, coming back to uh, investments in your, um, in your area, um, as I said earlier, you know, highlighted that the crossrail's coming through your, through your borough. And there are other uh, major projects at the same time. In terms of roads and highways, and um, potholes is something that you know council can deal with. But in terms of infrastructure in roads and highways, uh, George Osborne just um, will hopefully tomorrow will announce uh, about 15 billion investment mm -hmm. in roads and highways. How do you see yourself taking a pinch out of that? You know. Well, again, this is a, again. Is there a case to make in Barking? Oh, Island? most definitely. In fact, there's a whole case to make on the A13. Uh, you know, we're not selfish on this. The A13 goes through Tower Hamlets, yeah. it goes through Newham, it goes through Havering. So there's a big case because we're not only London is is thriving at the moment. It's one of the best world cities, if not the best. Well, it needs to be fed. Now, the way that happens is the port that's out in uh, Essex in Farrock. There's new, a new deep sea port there. It's the largest in the country. 50% of its produce will come into London. Mm. Now, if that's happening, it's just come online, within five years, it will be fully operational. And the A13 needs to cope with that. On, at the same time, there are, we are going to build, uh, with the support of the mayor's office and, and others, other investment, we're going to build anything between 20 to 25,000 homes in our borough alone. Mm. You know, if you look along the A13 corridor, you'll probably double that. How is that road going to cope mm. with, with all, all of that coming yeah. in? Yeah? yeah, on a daily basis. You and I both know if you, if you live along the east, eastern stretch of the A13 yeah. here, it's a nightmare it most is, yeah. days. Yeah. It's costing business millions. So what we have to do is, is, is talk business. Mm. We have to say, well, if it's costing business millions, surely it makes sense to invest and use some of the money that the government keeps announcing. My worry is how much of that money is real money and how much of that is re rehashed money. And we're finding that with what they've said about the NHS, the two billion in the NHS. Yeah. Um, it's now starting to unravel that actually it's not new money, all of this. Some of it is they're going to take it from other places. Sure. Well, I, yeah, I don't it's think a mixture that's of, right. You mixture know? of money coming from different places. Yeah. Um, uh, it, this might not be relevant to you, but uh, just out of curiosity, mm. um, because the Ford plant was basically based uh, in, in Dagenham because of the river mm. Uh, mm. initially mm. Um, in the early, early days of the century. To for so that they can use the river. Absolutely. And um, the river is very thriving in terms of economy yeah. and things like that. How are you going to, you know, keep that economy thriving through the with, with the borough and the river? And also, 
Do you feel that there's a, a flood risk because the government has um, announced a huge sum for, for flood zones? Is your, some of your area fall under that? The, the, as I understand it, and I am not an expert on flooding, so I yeah. may not have this completely right, but yeah. as I understand it, if the Thames barrier uh, went up yeah. and the flood waters went as there high as that. There was a risk last time they yeah. were talking if, about. If yeah. that happened, yeah. then part of Dagnum and Barking would go underwater. Okay. Um, if we go back centuries, and I mean centuries, we were marshland, yeah. which means we were part of the river. You know, so there's always a risk. But again, the risk is minimal, minimal. I, okay. would, I would imagine. Um, and you know, we do have to utilise the river. Sure. It's good for London. Yeah. Uh, we, I want to see river buses uh, happening from Barking and Dagenham. Yeah. We are only 15 minutes away from City Hall, yeah. um, if you use the Fenchurch Street line. So actually, we need to utilise the river more. You're looking at the person that wants to see green energy. I would love our borough to be the green capital or the capital. I'd love to use wind, I'd love to use solar panel, and I'd love to use river uh, tidal. For 23 hours a day, that river's moving one way or the other. Wouldn't it be good to get some energy out of yeah. it that we can then utilise that, that energy for the poorest in our community and give them social tariffs, which mean that actually they don't have to worry about eating or heating. You know, we would be able to support them. In terms, I mean, just coming to my mind that because you're having one of the largest developments uh, yeah. of the riverside area, the Barking side, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and there's a huge riverside at the same mm. time. Um, looking at some of the developments that uh, Canary Wolf is doing, uh, they have incorporated the um, the river, mm. and they've put in sports mm. and how you can mm. actually bring your boat into yeah. into the uh, into parking and just going yeah. to shopping and things like that. So, do you have any kind of vision of uh, d with your developments well <laughs> we do maybe james bond can uh, why not and, uh, why not mr bond will always be welcome park, park, in, <laughs> park is golden well what we want to see in in all seriousness you're absolutely right we've got the creek mouth uh, we've got the river road in that was where the fishing fleet for london used to be based yeah um before steam came along it was all based in barking yeah and, and you know that is you know that's linked to the river so we want to see Barking itself, the town centre, become the cultural hub of East London. We're getting the Barbican Guild Hall moving into the into the area, working with our college to provide uh, BAs and and uh, give us real aspiration sure, there. Sure. At the same, sorry. Sorry, Darren. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been told that I've, we've got a call. Let's just take the call. Slaan alaikum, caller. Hello. Hello, Slaan alaikum. Slaan alaikum. Uh, this is Shaket from Manchester. Sorry, Shaket from Manchester. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, What's your question or comment? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment first and then I'd like to ask a question to Darren. Sure. Yeah. Um, Darren, I'm, I'm pleased and encouraged um, how you trying to unite all different communities in your area by showing them that um, we all share common ground, common interests, common concerns and common aspirations. And I'm also encouraged the work and the great work you're doing with the youth. But the question is, I want to ask Darren, the youth, the work you're doing, the youth at the end of the day to see opportunities. So what opportunities are you creating in your area for this youth? Thank you. Sorry. So uh, I didn't quite get that question. Uh, it's something to do with, with common, common agenda. Yeah. Um, so it's good all the stuff I was doing. I think what he was trying to say is what opportunities we're going to give the youth. Okay. Um, if that was the question, I hope that was the question you was asking. Um, we, have, we have a whole range of opportunities. So like I was saying, if you imagine the, the, the Guildhall Barbican is a world-renowned institution, it's coming to our borough to give our young people who are interested in the arts the opportunity to, to work with world-class um, violinists, whoever it may be, you yeah. know, the, the Shakespeare, the whole, the whole sort of, the whole prep of the, of, of the arts. That's one area. We then have London East UK, which is, um, it's, we used to know it as locally as Man Bakers, but actually what it's going to be, it's going to be the only pharmaceutical facility in the whole of London. Yeah. You know, so if you're into the sciences, you've got that there. 
Then you're looking at CIMI, which is on the A13, yeah. which, is a, uh, which is the 21st century in engineering. So if you look at it already, we're talking about engineering, we're talking about the sciences, we're talking about the arts. We so invest in everything in one place. Absolutely. We're, we're we're, we have to go on a break. Okay. Sorry to cut you short, That's fine. but we'll, we'll discuss those three points in the next segment. Shudash only, we're going on a short break, and uh, and when we come back, we'll, we'll uh, discuss further with Darren. Welcome back to our show. We were uh, discussing about Barkin and Dagenham with the leader of the council, Darren Rodwell, and we will we are continuing on that. On this segment, we are going to talk about the future and the forward plan of the borough. You know, 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, and how he has been writing that. And um, before we go into that, um, Darren, you were talking about the uh, three three pots that we've got a call. Let mm -hmm. me take that call and then we'll come back to you. Okay. Salaam alaikum caller. Hello caller. Hello Salaam alaikum. Welcome Salaam. Bye, I'm in studio. I'm in the studio. Yes, you're in the studio. You're in the studio. Anhar. Anhar. Yes, Salaam alaikum. Anhar, you have a question or comments? Uh, I have got, uh, first of all, I would like to tell you the Darren Rodwell. Uh, who is uh, our leader of the parking in Dekinam. And I have got the question for him. Uh, there is a, a community center going to be built in London Ward. Okay. Uh, are they going to run by the council or they are going to give it to the uh, any group who is going to run for the each and everybody? I would like to know from my leader. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anurabh. Thank, thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Anurabh. Thank, thank you for you. your call and question. Um, it's up to you if you want to. Uh, sorry, we've got another call. Okay. So let's take that call. <laughs> Salaam alaikum, caller. Salaam Hello, alaikum. caller. Hello, Salaam alaikum, caller. Salaam alaikum, caller. Hello, caller. Uh, uh, we've lost the caller. Okay. So you were you were talking about. You want to finish on what we were talking about on the three pods that you brought in, the yeah. IT and the... We've, we've got the whole infrastructure idea now, where we're going for our young people. So they've got the sciences, they've got technical skills. I mean, we're investing £9 million into a technical skills college, part linked with Barking and Dagenham College. Um, so we've got, we've got skills as in uh, sciences, we've got skills in technical as in engineering, we've got skills in the arts, and we've got skills in maintenance, if you like, bricklaying, plumbing, electronic, you know, electrics, and so on and so forth. So I think we've got a lot covered there about taking the borough forward and with the SME. You know, we do have the largest SME um, uh, product of, okay. of companies in Before we in go London. into the S SME yeah. side of it, we've got another call, okay. so let's take the call. Assalamu alaikum caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, 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 yes, you're in, the, you're in the live studio. Can, can, can you let us know your name, please? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Islam. Islam. And uh, I have a uh, question uh, uh, for you, guys. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, now, uh, it's regarding the, uh, the central uh, community uh, center. Yeah. Uh, now, Mina Rahman, uh, the, uh, the perspective MP candidate, uh, claims on her Facebook account uh, so the, uh, conservatives. that she's uh, of July. Labour wanted to sell the central community center to build uh, housing. Now, I know from my meetings with Nina and uh, Mr. Star Sonder Rahman, I think he's the ex council uh, candidate. Uh, uh, that there were the uh, protagonists in trying to keep the uh, centre open. They petitioned the council and did a lot of uh, lobbying work, uh, as far as I know. And uh, now the centre is listed as an asset of uh, community value, first embarking, I guess. Now, I wanted to know from your guests uh, 
whether that is the place and the case and if the uh, minute the uh, same is uh, that is that there were the uh, protagonists in point to keep the center open and labor actually did want to send a uh, solve center which is used by I think about uh, over a thousand including a prayer facility uh, uh, being there. So if you would clarify this point please. Okay, uh, sure. Thank you, Islam Bhai. Thank, Thank you for coming on the on the on the phone. Thank you very much. Um, Okay. So you've got two questions. Yep. I mean, I know you want to get into the SME side yeah. of it. We can deal with that later on. Okay. Shall we deal with the questions? I think the Absolutely. viewers are, are anxious to have answers from you. The, we've got another call, so let's, let's take the call. Okay. And then um, we'll, we'll come back to you. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, caller. Hello, Farnsworth. Well, Islam, can you lower your volume on the TV and then talk to us? I'm not in that room. Okay. Your question and your comments. Okay. Can I speak to Mr. Darren? You're, you're speaking to him. Okay. Mr. Darren, I'm from uh, Mojibuddin from Bakkenfield World. Mojibuddin. Yes. I can. In your time, what are you doing with the movement? It's very much for us. And one thing I'd like to know, which is the uh, in backing the economy is making a new housing, is it any possible we can make sure is it those houses coming to backing and economy people or other people can apply for it? Local residents, okay. 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 Thank, thank, thank you, Mujuddin Bhai, uh, for coming on to the, on to the um, call. Um, so you've got three questions. First one, let's deal with it. Okay. Anhar Bhai is um, asking about Long Bridge Wood. Um, there's a um, um, community centre being built by yourself, yeah. by the council, and who's well, going to run it? Actually, no, it's not being, being built by us. It's being built as part of a 106 agreement okay. in Longbridge Ward. Okay. The 106 agreement is where a developer wants to develop. And they uh, give you the money to That's it. They, yeah. they, or they're actually building it for yeah. us. Um, well, that's not actually online yet. What we have done, there's four different groups that have asked to run it. Yeah. Um, and they're from all different backgrounds. Um, and what we've said now is actually the four groups need to come together and make a management committee. Um, so that the facility can be used by the whole community. Okay. So very much like, funny enough, Fanshawe or the Gascoigne's site, where actually it can be Friday prayers, it can be for uh, toddlers it's a groups. multi-purpose. Yeah, absolutely, okay. because actually a, a community centre should be what it stands for for yeah. the community, sure. yeah? And that means every part of our community. So I do make my, a pledge. My experience on, on this kind of thing yeah. is that once, um, once a, 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 a particular religious group starts uh, doing their relig religion activities, it tends to be in that direction. Yeah. But it's, it'll, it'll be good to see if you, if you can keep it uh, well, with I the mean, management yeah. uh, in, in, a, in a vast And community. that's what we're trying to do. We're okay. trying to say, well, actually, look, it shouldn't be just any one community takes ownership of it. It should be the whole community sure. manage it. Okay. And then by that happening, we give it the best opportunity for success. Um, because what we don't want is we don't want communities, as you quite rightly say, taking over areas because then it builds isolation. Mm. And what we want to do is build the community cohesion, not isolation, because actually isolation only brings fear and intimidation and bigotry. And we've already had that. So we've work, got to work very hard to make sure we give it a stable future throughout so the whole community. So you're pretty much on your, your vision on, on that community center that's yeah. been built is that yeah. it's going to be run by multi-culture committee yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Let's uh, deal with the next question that Islam Bai has, has yeah. put forward about Fanshaw uh, Centre yeah. and that Mina Rahman and the Tories have uh, succeeded in holding it by through the Localism Act. Yeah. But he's also heard that the Labour has tried to sell it off. Yeah. Um, could it be the case that your previous uh, administration identified it as a surplus. That's it. Um, the the and previous administration, quite rightly, they were looking at um, sites for regeneration. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was one of the sites identified, um, and um, I know I make no apologies for that. That's what they felt at the time was right. 
we come from it at a different angle, and quite rightly, the the the, uh, the viewer said that 1,100 people use that a week. Yeah. They do, um, and to us, uh, as a new administration, we felt, and to me personally, as I'm the councillor there, I mean, the problem is, people try to make political gain out of community issues, and I have no problem with that if they're being genuine. Now, the genuine part of that was I had already made a pledge to Mr. Ali, who runs the mosque, to Peter, who operates the community centre, that when I, if I became leader, it would be there for the community to use. I honoured that pledge before it became a community asset building. Okay. Yeah? So they are right that they put it forward as a community asset building. And they, where they have wrong, put in a petition to the council? Yeah, okay. but where they're wrong, is yeah. it was already saved. Right. So I won't take it away, but what I will say is they've been slightly disingenuous because it was already saved. And if anyone wants to question me on that, I'm more than happy to have that debate anywhere they like okay. because actually I have got it, I have got it because I had the committee come in and see me before it actually went through. Mm. And I actually gave that assurance to Peter and Mr. Ali and I went down to, and I've been a, I've been to the mosque probably about six times now, uh, and I assured them before the election that it would be saved. saved okay. And I have kept my promise. Well, thank you for those two answers. Uh, the third question was from Mojibuddin about all these housing developments that you're doing, yes. and how much of it is going to stay local for the local residents? Mm. There's a good question. Um, the truth of the matter is, I can't give a def definitive answer. What is your waiting list like? It's it's around. It is. It was around fifteen thousand. Okay, it's, it's not now, that bad. No, well, it's dropped because we've brought in different um, uh, policies. Yeah, yeah. To, to to now say, well, actually, if you're a certain, then you're actually better off trying to get shared ownership. Yeah. going to affordable you know, housing association. There are about 20 providers. We happen to be the largest because it's our borough. You know, a third of our borough is private. A third is buy to let, which is, you know, you just lease off of a private landlord. Yeah. yeah, and a third of it is social. So what we have to do, not everyone can be... And the social bit is councils or, or housing association? Council, mix. yeah, council housing association. Okay. So what we're now saying is with the mayor, we're working hard with the mayor, with the Riverside, there will be a mixed tenure there as well. So some of it will be private, some of it will be shared ownership, some of it will be affordable, some of it will be from the housing waiting list per se, some of it will be people coming in from outside. Because again, we can't, we can't dictate all of that. We can say some of it's going to be for our local community, quite rightly so. Um, but we have to also accept that if people want to buy, they can buy wherever they live and, yeah. they, can, and they can come here. And Barking and Dagnum is the place to invest at the moment because it's about 100,000 cheaper than anywhere else in London. So, Darren, we've got another call. Okay. Uh, let's take the call and then we'll come back to you. Asalaamu Alaikum, caller. Asalaamu Alaikum. Can I speak to the leader, please? Yes, you are speaking to him, with him. Hello. Hello there. Hello, good evening. My name is Faisal Rahman from Barking. Faisal Rahman. I would like to welcome you to the Bangladeshi channel. It's nice to see you there as a leader of Barking and Agaram. Thank you very much. Doing well done. Well done to you. Thank you. Okay. No question. No question. Well, thank you very much for <laughs> your thank kind you. words. Thank you, Faisal Ray, for uh, your support. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, Darren, you, on, on terms of the SME you were yeah. trying to yeah. talk about earlier, um, how are you supporting your small business enterprises in your, in your area? Okay. And there are such certain things, as you yeah. quite rightly know, in the government uh, uh, agenda, and they're trying to you know, get them up and running. Yeah. But in terms of the council... Well, we have, we have the BEC, the Business Enterprise Centre. Uh, we're one of the few councils that have invested in that, as well as the technical skills, as well as the adult college, as well as, you know, we're, we've got the job shops as well. Um, so we have a whole raft of support networks now in getting people into becoming SME uh, businesses. In fact, we've done so well that I believe we are the highest 
in London to get SME businesses off the ground and operating. And, um, and the Business of, um, Enterprise Centre has something like 5,000 people on their books that they've, they're supporting. Mm -hmm. you know. So we do, a, we do a lot for getting people empowered to start running their own business. I, as I said before, I've had that privilege. Um, it's, it, it, it's great on one sense and it, it's, it's worrying in other senses. So what we need to do is try and see where we can support and facilitate. Um, what we can't do is give out grants like we used to be able to do. But what we can do, as a council, we give out the second highest amount of business to private business, voluntary or, or you know, private, private, um, second in the country. Barnsley beat us, but we were second. Okay. In local small business, we are in the top 40. I have asked officers to make sure that over the next two years, we get ourselves into the top 20. 17.4% of so the an ambitious target. It's a very ambitious target. We want to be up to 25%. But in truth, do you know how much money that is? That's £335.2 million we give out to the private sector to facilitate what we need to do in Barking and Dagenham. And I'm very proud of that fact that we are supporting our community. Because whether you live there, work there or play there, yeah. we are supporting you as a, as a council. I'm, I have to ask you a couple of more questions. Uh, we've only got literally two minutes. Okay. But before that, let me take this phone call. Asalaamu Alaikum, caller. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, caller. Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, yeah, well, my name is Afnan Chowdhury. Yes, ask one day. How, uh, I want to ask Darren about education. Uh, yes. I'm calling from back in the country ward, and I was wondering like, whether you have any plans visiting school fit, number of in the school? Visiting, you mean? Uh, the seats in the school oh, for the, seats. the students. The number of seats, OK. Yeah. Okay, we're actually building schools, uh, well, on, it's been on a continuous basis and we're upgrading our schools. We've invested around about £120 million into school infrastructure in the borough and we've got a new, we've just been given £60 million for a new free school on the riverside, which is really, really important. What I'm really pleased to say is all of our schools are really achieving well when it comes to exam results. They've been, they've been improving year on year. Now, we do have some blips, as everyone will have blips, um, because we've had a massive demographic change. But when you think about where we've come in a decade, from, from a very, very low star into a, into a very aspirational place. We've got, we've got to thank our children for doing that. Yeah. The fact that they're, they're investing their time, it's great to go into the libraries to see so many children studying today. Sure. It's a wonderful place Darren, to be. Darren, I was going to ask you on the education mm. at the same time. I mean, comparing to Redbridge, just on your border, um, how do you see yourselves, your, your schools in the future? Are they, would they be just as good as, because a lot of people want to go to Redbridge just for the school. Yeah, I mean, again, there are some, there are some private schools in Redbridge. There are some, uh, you know, um, different, you know, not comprehensive. The truth of the matter is, though, I've always believed that if your children want to study and if the parents want to encourage their children to study, then they'll do well at school. And, and remember, Redbridge is a very different place to Barking and Dagenham. We are the third most deprived borough in London. Yeah. yeah, Redbridge is quite an affluent borough. So you, you're doing chalk and cheese. But the truth I would say is, if more people wanted to make sure they, they give their children a good education, what you're going to get is good results. Sure. And it's Darren, about that aspiration. I have to stop you there. We're just warming up, but unfortunately <laughs> our time is up. It's been a pleasure. I, I just wanted to ask you one last question okay. before we go, in case we don't get you again is that what kind of a legacy do you want to leave behind as a leader in your borough? Well, that's the, probably the biggest question I've, I've always thought about this. What I want to have as a legacy is knowing that I've given my community the opportunities that once there wasn't and the ones I didn't have. The legacy I want is to show that honesty, integrity and most of all aspiration is back in Barking and Dagenham and that is the legacy I want to leave the residents of Barking and Dagenham. Thank you very much Darren for coming to our show. Thank really you very appreciate much. It. And hopefully we'll get you in Absolutely. In, in, I'd in, love to come the back again. again. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Shri Darshak Pondili, Amadashate Aachke Chilen, Barking Dagenham Council Leader, uh, Councillor Darren Rodwell.
আমাদের নেক্সট ডে আমাদের সাথে আপনাদের সাথে থাকবে আজম ভাই আমি আগামী চার সপ্তাহ আপনার সাথে থাকতে পারছি না আমি একটু দেশে বাইরে যাচ্ছি তা আজম ভাই আপনাদেরকে বিভিন্ন গেস্ট নিয়ে এসে আপনার সাথে পলিটিক্স সম্বন্ধে আলাপ করবে আমাদের সাথেই থাকুক মঙ্গলবার আবার টিউনিয়ন থ্যাংক ইউ